Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another installment of, I guess we're calling this good versus bad at this point, even though on the last video, we kind of both agreed good. Um, yeah, Nico Lero here along with Lauren. And yeah, we want to do a, a, a kind of discussion on on where we stand with this Robert Downey Jr. as as Dr. Doom thing. Um, I like it. Personally, before before we go any further, I'm all for it, despite everyone being, you know, handbags. Where do you stand on it? I'm with you on this one. I think it's brilliant. I think it's absolutely genius. And following on from our last discussion video um, about Deadpool and Wolverine, it's a revival of the MCU um, yeah. and reinvigorating an interest and, and something that it really needs. Um, so I'll leave it there for now. Leave it there for now. I thought what could be interesting for this one is to turn over to the millions and millions of subscribers over at Watch Mojo because they have a really, really good ongoing series called Super Villain Origins X Character. And they've got one for Doctor Doom. And I thought for the sake of not annoying the the virgins, we could look at some of the some of this video and look at the key things that make up Doctor Doom, like who he is, what motivates him, what are some of his characteristics, some of his facets, so that then that's the frame of work we're arguing or discussing with. We're not pulling random facts out the air. So if you're cool to do that, uh, yeah. I'm going to roll, I'm going to just quickly roll this video and Super Villain Origins Doctor Doom. Here we go. It's been very useful for, for me. Pulls the strings. I agree. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we will be exploring the comic book origins of Victor Von Doom, aka Doctor Doom, arch nemesis of the Fantastic Four, and no, not that kind of doctor. I've always wanted power. Now I have an unlimited supply. There are often reimaginings and different versions to a character's past. We have chosen to primarily follow the storyline which unfolded in 2006's Books of Doom, issues number one to six. Depicted as having the biggest ego in the Marvel Universe, even more so than Tony Stark, Doom's goals for world domination and this Right, you see that? Right off the mm -hmm. bat, depicted as having the biggest ego in the MCU, even more than Tony Stark. Already, this says to me, perfect casting. We're, we're, yeah. we're already there. And bearing in mind, this isn't a reactive video to what's just come out of Comic-Con. This is eight years old, this video. And already, they've made that intrinsic ego link with Stark and Doom. It's already making sense of those that stand in his way often come with a caveat that he may actually end up being the right person to rule the world. Doom has created an idyllic society. Idyllic? Maybe. Oh, I love this show. But isn't that the promise of every fascist? He's certainly one of the smartest and most dangerous villains ever conceived, and does a fairly good job of ruling the fictional country. Smartest villains ever conceived. Let's hang on to that one, because if someone was telling me, do I believe that Robert Downey Jr. has the capacity to be the smartest man in the room? Well, he's already shown he has the capacity to do that with Iron Man. Now he's got the capacity to do it again. Again, this is this is comic book law. This isn't the opinions of Watch Mojo. This is in the freaking comics, right? And crossed so over already... with real life as well. How many people bring back their careers like Robert Downey Jr. did? Exactly. He's on a different level. Exactly. He really is of Latveria. You are trespassing on Latverian soil. First appearing in 1962's Fantastic Four number 5, Doctor Doom quickly left his mark on the Marvel Universe. In this seminal issue, all of Doctor Doom's tropes were established. Genius intellect and ingenious devices, time travel, his rivalry with Mr. Fantastic, sorcery, and his indestructible suits of armor are all laid bare. Doom's backstory is illuminated as well, as Mr. Fantastic recounts their school days. Same old Reed, always stretching, reaching for the stars with the weight of the world on his back. That's such a bad But movie. dreams don't pay the bills, do they? <laughs> Victor Von Doom's disfiguring accident at school <coughs> would go on to transform the man into the villain we know today, when he later left society to study with monks in seclusion. In 1982's Fantastic Four number 246 and 247, it would also be revealed how important the fictional land of Latveria is to Dr. Doom. His home country, and now its dictator, Dr. Doom would do anything to protect his home. It was perhaps the first time when we truly understood Doom's capability to successfully lead a nation, making his world domination schemes seem some. Okay, Doom would do anything to protect his home. Now, a lot of people have said 
that one of the issues with this idea is, is that even if you actually look at the Doctor Doom costume that's come out of Comic Con, a lot of people saying, "Oh, it looks like Iron Man. It could be a different alternative universe, a multiverse where Iron Man has become Doom." Well, mm -hmm. that makes perfect sense to me because they've just 100%. said here that they've just said here he would do anything to protect his home. Can I remind everyone of the Ultron Initiative in uh, in Avengers Two? Tony literally mm -hmm. pitches the idea of creating, quote, a suit of armor around the world. Tony is cut from that exact same ilk whereby he yep. would do anything to protect his home. Like, Downey's shown he's got this gear. And if you were what to What better play origin world, story? Yeah. Yep. Sorry. So the, what the, better uh, origin story the, than, you know, the world's biggest superhero turning into the world's biggest supervillain? But it writes itself. This is this is kind of what I'm pitching. It's like this is all hypothetical at this point, obviously, because the the, the reality is is we don't know what the story is going to be with with Victor Von Doom. But keep watching because I'm going to pitch. I'm going to give you a pitch of how Stark could become Victor Von Doom that I think you might you might all quite like. But let's let's get back to this. What understandable, as its leader, Doom ensured that Latveria was prosperous and that it had no hunger or crime. Now, Dr. Doom was no longer a faceless madman and an evil villain, but a man who believed that he was the only person in the world who could do it good. Who does that it sound until like? until 2006's Books of Doom, where we would discover the detailed explanation of the journey that made Dr. Doom into the leader of a country and eventual enemy of the Fantastic Four. You will all be bound over for trial. The charge is treason against New Latveria, and if found guilty, you will all be... So, just want to pause here, have a look here. This is on the old Fox animation. One of the biggest problems is that, is that Doom never takes his mask off. Evidence to the contrary, shut up. <laughs> Destroyed. Born in Latveria to a gypsy woman, Doom's legacy begins early in the womb. His mother... Oh, sorry. This is very important, too, because another thing people are complaining about is the ethnicity, saying that Doom is Romanji, you know, born born to, to a gypsy. That's one right. of the storylines. There have been so many imaginings of this character throughout the years, as this video is explaining you don't need to go with the with the timeline or with the comic book one where he happens to be a Romani time, gypsy. Doesn't Roma, don't Romani gypsies come from Ireland or partially come from Ireland? Uh, Romania, I thought. Romania. I, I, I thought, thought Romania. They've definitely yeah. had an origin through Ireland. And doesn't Robbie Down Robert Downey Jr. have an Irish heritage? No, they don't they all in America? <laughs> <laughs> Fair, fair. I mean, there are loose. It's a loose complaint. It's a loose complaint, but it's yeah. weak. But it's absolutely find weak. To complain about. Ah, of course they are. But again, you've seen here. He's Eastern European, or he's specifically Romani gypsy. Like, it, oh, sorry, Romani. We're not allowed to say the G word anymore. But Romani. It's there are different iterations of this character, as by the way, there are with so many comic book characters had several consorts with demons ew which probably had an early effect on doom and his abilities due ew. to those consorts however doom's mother would end up being killed by their gypsy clan after she began tapping into demonic powers this event would turn young victor bitter as he began to be consumed by thoughts of vengeance victor left with his father where they encountered enemies and were forced to hide in the frozen wilderness his father would later freeze to death while clutching his son to keep him warm Victor's desire to avenge his parents' deaths turned towards the black arts, like his mother. But lacking success, he would use his higher I intellect to see if science off. could get him what he wanted. Mm. At 16, and now the leader of his own gypsy clan, Victor would be forced to kill a man for survival. Coming to terms with this murder, he accepted an invitation to study in America, where he was fated to meet a young Reed Richards, aka Mr. Fantastic, who proved to be an annoying, if formidable rival for Victor in their studies. Now let's be clear about this, shall we? I hate you. All of you. It was during this time that Victor Von Doom developed what would eventually become known as Doom Bots, androids who would go on to act as surrogates for the real Doctor Doom. Later. Ooh, who else has a commonality with inventing robots to defend himself? Arf, arf. I, I swear <laughs> we've seen this already. Do you see what I mean? There are so many parallels yeah. between these two characters that you can it draw on to suit so a movie. Much sense. It really does. It really, really does.
Victor, in a desperate bid to save his mother from damnation, he would use magic fused with science to build a machine to cross dimensions, which a demon lord blew up in his face. It was yeah. his ultimate failure, and it left him with a scar to constantly remind him of it. Now, believing his face was ruined, he would always keep it hidden. To achieve his goals, Victor would need to hone his science and magical skills, so he traveled to the Himalayas. So just notes on this, the hiding of the face thing. Again, this is one specific storyline where his face yeah. is burnt and he decides to keep it secret. You saw in the previous runs, that wasn't the case. So it's yeah. not a necessity for this character to keep his face hidden. But well, this again, is where we'll the gatekeeping comes in. People, people go into their favorites and like they don't want to see people... their favorites not being done or whatever. Nope. But this is it just needs to be open. There's so many possibilities, yep. so many different versions of it. Just enjoy it for what it is. Literally that, literally that. Malayas to study a secret sect of monks. But his ego and mental frailty only grew. And to cope with that, he would need to build armor. Using again science and magic, his second skin would finalize his transformation into Doctor Doom. He would use his fortified powers to lead a revolution in Latveria and conquer the land. Then he would face the demon lord once again for his other soul. And this time, he succeeded. His armor would prove invaluable to this task. But you see, here we, we, we in this storyline, as well as him being a Romani, and as well as him not showing his face, he's also confronting a demon lord. Now, I don't think that's the story we're going to get in the MCU. So all of this gatekeeping about this specific story where he doesn't show his face, there's a whole lot of other really weird things, like him having sex with yeah. demons and then the demons killing his mum, oh, wow. which you're not going to see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like, yeah. you can't cherry pick this stuff. It's either do it or don't do it, or kind yeah. of be inspired by it, which is what the MCU has always done. Absolutely. Yes. They've got to put their own spin on things as well as to yes. what the audience wants to see, you know? This is it. It was nearly indestructible and increased his physical strength and abilities, and also came with a jetpack, of course. Doom's scientific pack. background enables him to build a myriad of things, from transportation devices to weapons fortified by magic. His magical abilities are also something to fear. He's able to use electricity to kill, detain someone, or even create a powerful force field. Using magic also extends to his scientific abilities, which he later used to travel through time and to different dimensions. Mm -hmm. But Doom's greatest strength has always been his intellect and strategy. His yeah. Doombots, for instance, can either be used as a deception, confusing enemies into fighting a fake Doom, or for brute strength to greatly expand his deadly force. Mm. Okay, so much for avoiding an international incident. Truly, his only weakness is his that unabashed like ego, as he believes nobody can match him. It was. But when you're dealing with someone who can successfully oh. lead a country, effectively use <laughs> the limits why. of science and magic, and looks as menacing as he does, perhaps that ego is somewhat justified. I'm almost impressed, but this... Beautiful, isn't it? Doom has appeared in various forms of media throughout the years, yeah. from television series and feature films all the way to video games. Okay, they're rounding it up here. So let's just stop sharing mm -hmm. this and let me jump back into our into our shared thing then. Um, so look, as you can see, this is a character with a rich, varied history. And mm -hmm. I showed this because I now want to go into this you know what we were calling gatekeeping just now um yeah so this post has gone viral it's had over 108,000 likes in the last 24 hours 23 million views this is a viral post it's going to be a shit. wow so let's get it up on screen um and let's just read off some of these points i mean the title every reason this sucks uh and it's in relation to downey playing victor von doom and there are points to this sucking so the first point most important thing out of the way is the whitewashing doom is a romani character and that's insanely important for his backstory of oppression and considering romani representation is already something marvel has messed up a lot it sucks to see that continued okay a few things to this point <laughs> because I, I i don't even know where to begin with something so stupid is there something to be said about the fact that Romanis are underrepresented, not just in the MCU, but in film. Duh. Water is wet. That is an absolute fact. That is mm. an issue. Okay. Is it an issue that the MCU could have fixed? No. Is it an, is, is it an issue that the MCU could have addressed by casting a, a, a Romani actor? Sure. Now I'll flip the ball back to you and say, who? 
Give me a Romani actor of note. Yep. Give me a Romani exactly. actor of note who can carry not just the role of a major villain, but a major villain who the next ensemble Avengers movie is basing itself around. If there's mm -hmm. one out there that I'm not aware of, that I haven't thought of, fair play. But off the top of my head, I can't think of a, a, a Romani actor. And the idea that, oh, but you, you have to take someone new. You can't do it for a role this big. I'm sorry. No, you, you can't. You cannot no, do you that. Can't. You cannot do that for a role this big. There's different yeah. contexts to look at here. It's like yeah. it's like when there was the big kickoff about um, straight people being cast in gay roles. But then you had gay yeah. actors or, or a lot of gay actors coming out and saying, you're missing the point. It's about at the end of the day, you're playing a character. So all gay yeah. actors don't want to be cast in all gay roles because they're not acting yeah. or they're not being challenged and stuff like that. That's where well, exactly. it comes in. You know, at, at the end of the day, what people are discussing is what Marvel are doing to consult Downey on the Romany mm -hmm. aspects of this role because they've not yeah. they've not talked about it yet. He's only just been announced in the role. So to me, that's well, more there's, important. There's there's two things to that. One. We don't know if this is the Romani version of Doctor Doom. Yeah. As the video yeah. just showed, they may not go with that version. If they do, great. And if they do, I imagine Danny, being the actor he is, is going to do his due diligence and study. Pure speculation, mm -hmm. but I believe in the betterment of mankind that he would do that. To your point of gay actors playing gay roles, Rami Malek, who played a Bond villain, who is a Middle mm -hmm. Eastern guy, refused to join Bond if they cast him as a Middle Eastern terrorist, he says, I'll join. But if you cast me as a Middle Eastern terrorist, I'm out. Yet it's that would have his death. It's typecasting. Actors don't want that. And there is evidence. It's not opinion. There is evidence to support that. You don't need to cast a Romani actor to play a, Ro a, a Romani character. You don't need to mm. cast a Middle Eastern person to play a Middle Eastern terrorist. Equally, I hear what this person's saying. There are plenty yeah. of instances of whitewashing. You know, Lawrence of, of Arabia, prime example. You're casting Sir Alec Guinness, God bless him, as a freaking Arabian mm. chief. It's like, now see, that yeah. is taking the mickey. That's taking the yeah. mickey. Um, but yeah, there, but it's, it's, you know, it. have a go when it's worth it. Have a go when it's worth it. Mm -hmm. But like, mm -hmm. it's like I say, I think it's more important about the research and consultation elements of it. And I guarantee if it is the Romani version, we will hear and you will see on the credits and everything, a whole group of people, of Romani people that have come in and consulted on the history of Romani, the uh, the ways, that everything about it to make sure mm. that that is implemented into that character properly. That's how it works. But, you know, there are instances, like you say, of whitewashing where this, this didn't happen. But nowadays, when something's yeah. done properly, that's how it works. So I'm more Correct. interested to see if that's the version, is, is how they do that and who they bring in yep. to consult, you know, on, on those things. Yep. The second point that this 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 account raises, number two, Doom keeps his mask on at all times. We've already shown in the scope of this video that that is factually not true. All right. You've seen shows from the old, the hailed, the holy grailed, the goated yeah. Fox Saturday morning cartoons that everyone holds in such high esteem. And rightfully so. They're freaking great. <laughs> That's one form of medium where God Dr. Doom showed his face. God bless the 90s, but that was one medium where Dr. <laughs> Doom showed his face. There was not a congressional freaking hearing about it. So right off the bat, this statement is, is completely factually incorrect. Doom keeps yeah. his mask on at all times. No, he doesn't. They then go up to say, they then go on to say, the only reason I've seen for this being cool is because the Avengers would have to fight someone that looks like a friend. I mean, yeah, that is cool. Uh, this is irrelevant for a character whose face can't be seen. So again, already proven. The face can be seen. And also, can we talk about this whole secret identity face can't be seen thing? Traditionally, in comic books, the characters wouldn't show their faces. Batman. Yeah, let's keep it Marvel, actually. I won't even go with Batman. Spider-Man, secret identity. Captain America, mm, less so. But Iron Man, for most part, half in the enough. old comics, was secret identity, half and half, right? But people mm -hmm. didn't know that Tony Stark was Iron Man. To this day, yeah. a lot of people say, that that, uh, that ending of Iron Man where Stark says, I am Iron Man, messed up the MCU. Hindsight 2020, no, it didn't. The MCU mm. has never played, the MCU has never played with the notion of secret identities. 
we know who Spider-Man is in this world. People know that Tom Holland is Spider-Man. People know that Tony Stark is Iron Man. People know that Bruce Banner is Hulk. Like, there are no secret identities in this world. So again, this pearl clutching of, oh, but we have to, we have to have him. Well, not so much have a secret identity, but not show his face. It's bogus. But, like, it's not yeah, part it's, of it, the history nah. of this universe. Literally, like, it it could be anybody in that in that theory. Like, there'd be no point in announcing an actor for it because what? Where's the excitement in that? I I, I, don't, I don't see that. Like, literally, you could just put anybody in a mask. Mm -hmm. Well, you could, and the person then goes on to say, if they were to change Doom, not wearing his mask, you sacrifice an actual compelling aspect of his character. I can get on board with that. Um, he mm. sacrificed his whole face over a blemish. It's a physical representation of the way Victor views anything short of perfection as flawed. It's an interesting facet of his character. To properly flesh that out, you need more mm. than two or three movies where he has sparse roles. You're talking, you're talking about something that has been formed over many, 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 many comic book runs there. You can't yeah. convey that in such, without being a throwaway line. But also equally... Yes, that makes up part of his character in the comic book. You don't need to go into that level of detail for a comic book movie villain. No. You just don't. No. This guy needs to have a clear character, which is he's got an ego that's even bigger than Tony Stark's. He believes in perfection, which kind of informs his quasi-fascism of wanting the, everything to be in his the world according to his view mm. you don't need to go into this big diatribe of having him wear a mask because the face blemish and that reason where i'm ever so sorry guys i've got a, a cough that i can't get rid of at the moment um the thing is they don't actually know what they're going to do with the mask yet all, all he did was use exactly. the mask in the reveal just to reveal that it was him so why are people digging so hard into this now when it was just used for a reveal? You've no idea what they're going to do with it yet. Exactly. exactly it's a, right. a non-issue. The the next it's completely a non-issue. The next one has me has me laughing my ass off. Doom has more history with the Fantastic Four. Doom's relationship with the Four is what separates him from regular villains. He's not a villain because he's evil. He hates Reed Richards and, by extension, the Four. Well, also, factually incorrect, because the comic line that this guy's praising of having him be a Romani character and having him be never showing his face also happens to be the line where he has... It also happens to be the comic book one where he has sex with demons and a demon kills his mother. So... Do you want that part? Do you want that part? Um, because really. actually, what makes what makes him evil is the fact that his mother is murdered by a demon. He then goes on to hate Reed Richards. His evil is influenced by ah. evil. Yeah, not by the yeah, fact. Yeah, you can that see just from like seeing his origins. Guy. That's it. You can see it by his origins. It's like okay, I kind of I kind of understand where you're coming from, mate. You know what I mean? Mm. Like, yeah. I think anybody that would fuck anybody up. You know. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, listen, it, it shocks me how many people are not fact-checking this tweet. It, it's it's insane. Yeah. And, you know, it took us all of 10 minutes in the opening of this video to disprove most of this. Um, but, yeah, he's not a villain because he's evil. He hates Reed's Richards and by extension the four. I mean, that line makes no sense because then what's being said is no. that, oh, he's evil because he hates someone. No. In the run you're talking about where he's associated with the Fantastic Four and where he's Romani and where he wears a mask, he's evil because his mother is murdered by a demon. That's what makes him go pop. That makes more right? sense. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah. But we're not going to get that because you're not going to get no. demon shagging in the MCU. That's just not going to happen, right? No, but they and might they, they be inspired say, by that story. Like, take the demon shagging out of it. You know, the, death, death the of a mother. Death of a mother. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. That that stuff makes sense. Making him a general villain runs the risk of making him generic. Was Thanos generic? Was mm, he? Yeah. And yet, when you look at villains, like, oh, generic. I don't know. I don't see anything generic. And, you know, you talk about being villains being associated directly with a protagonist. How do you feel about Ronan the Accuser or Malekith the Dark Elf? Some of the worst villains in the MCU. But, 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 but they're not generic because they're associated with a protagonist. I mean, it's BS, mate. It, it's, it, it's, it's, yeah. 
this comment it's makes personal opinion sense. gone it, mad really well it really is i mean <laughs> also here's another one right here's one people don't know do you know which other character is really synonymous with the fantastic four as in he made his first appearance with the fantastic four and actually started as a villain before becoming good black Go panther black panther really did not yep. know that Black Panther started as a Fantastic Four villain, but do you see anyone complaining about the fact that T'Challa or T'Chaka, as he was, had any what had zero, zero connection mm -hmm. with the Fantastic Four? No, he just existed to use this line of thinking as a generic character because he existed with everyone and people loved mm -hmm. him. So you see what I mean? You don't need to serve the origin to this hardcore level that's being demanded. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, Marvel want this. They want everybody to be talking about it like this. They want to keep it trending. They want the conversations. Ultimately, yeah, yeah. that's what's going to you know, dr drum up the interest. But at the same time, I just I do wish some individuals would just think a little more about the wider context. Um, Think I mean, and as do someone some who research. comes to it from a more casual, yeah, like uh, for me, as someone who comes to it as more of a casual Marvel fan and sort of perspective that doesn't necessarily have the majority of this knowledge, my mind would be open to that anyway. But it's interesting just hearing all of this from yourself, who is more informed from published articles or videos of people of other people who are also more informed. I'm very surprised that some of these opinions have been brought out. However. It could also be a clever way of getting people to interact with it because there's no saying that this person actually thinks these things are true. Listen, I, I, I like to believe that the, the people who are trolls are hopefully a minority or at least or at least people who just write stuff online because they know it will get reactions i hope are a minority again believing in the betterment of humankind i like to think that if people are going to go on a twitter tirade like this however misinformed and factually incorrect i like to at least believe that they believe in their own bollocks you know yeah well, i like to believe that but i think a lot of the time it, it's set up for traction and I, I, but there are just a lot of people that just don't inform themselves like you say um making those that made that so that, all of these statements are just completely off it's very uh, odd completely off it's it's very odd uh there's a pretext to the following statements the rest of the reasons i have will be specifically in the off chance he's a stark variant and not victor von doom which i think is quite likely by the way that he's a stark variant so the next comment is making I, I doom a variant likely. of yeah, I think making Doom a variant of Tony Stark undoes the interesting nuance of both characters. Iron Man is a morally questionable hero, and Doom is a villain with a strict moral compass. Combining them just makes a generic villain. Again, it's a platitude to say it makes a generic villain because X reason. It's like, what mm -hmm. makes a generic villain is a villain who lacks motivation, a villain who is just evil for the sake of being evil, who doesn't have a compelling backstory. The fact that if he's a Stark variant, therefore shares traits mm -hmm. with Tony Stark, as the video already showed at the beginning, the one thing they do have that's highly similar is their egos and IQs, right? They're actually more intrinsically linked than this person's letting on. So it, it, it's, it's nonsense here. The fact that he would yeah. share traits with Tony Stark doesn't make him a generic villain. It actually makes him comic book accurate. Yeah, 100%. I mean, literally, just from the video that you played at the beginning, there's so much relevancy. Even in, like, the first 30 seconds of that video, straight away, you're like, even aside from the fact that, to me, it just made sense to bring him back in some capacity, especially with the multiverse being a thing literally anything is possible you can do anything you want you can make anything make sense if you want to but then you look into the character and the history of the character and the origin of the character and all the mm. things that you flagged earlier they all make sense yep. so yep. i don't understand why what yeah yeah <laughs> it doesn't make sense to me this next one, I see where he's coming from, but it's it's not a factual thing. It's an emotional thing. So I'm not going to tell him that he's wrong here because this is just an interpretation. This thing, is opinion. Right? Hmm. This is opinion and opinions. One is not more valid than the other. But to say it undoes the sacrifice at the end of Endgame to have Robert Downey Jr. show up again. And he says this one is self-explanatory. Before I say anything, where do you stand on that? 
I disagree massively. At the end of the day, you have to be able to separate those things. And if he's an invested Marvel fan, then he'll be invested in the concept of the, of the multiverse. So just because he doesn't want to see Tony Stark's sacrifice be undone by seeing Robert Downey elsewhere, you have to separate the character from the actor. Like, 100%. even though it does make sense, unless they do use the whole, if it's a variant of it's Iron Man that's turned into Doom, still makes sense because it's a variant. Still makes sense. It's exactly if right. If they don't connect that, it's an actor and it's a role. See it for what it is. So, it doesn't undo so anything. This is, this is where I'm coming from. And Louis and I had a quite a spat about this on, on WhatsApp. He was like, Downey Jr. is intrinsically linked to, to Iron Man for me. And I completely understand that line of thought, how he is mm. intrinsically linked. It's like, you know, Keanu Reeves is intrinsically linked to John Wick and Neo. John Travolta, one could argue, is intrinsically linked to Pulp Fiction. You know, it's like, yeah, there, there are Keith Ledger is intrinsically linked to, to the Joker now. Right. There are definitely mm. instances of where a role is so synonymous with an actor that you just don't think of anything else with them. hundred mm. percent. I get that with Robert Downey because he made he literally was Iron Man. Like I get that Wade Wilson, like freaking Ryan Reynolds is Deadpool, right? It's I get it. But ultimately, this is an actor playing a role. If they want to tie it in with Stark, we've already discussed in this video that there's plenty of similarities with these characters where you could make this plausible. Mm -hmm. If he wasn't tying into Stark at all, and it was literally just actor playing role is there an argument to be made that it would be jarring for a few minutes 100 percent, yes 100 percent, yes it depends but I also it's about mindset though oh sorry Paul. no it is it is because look louis louis proof to the fact that there are people who will literally have just rdj is iron man right and it, it will be jarring to see robert downey jr face and all if they're not going to mask him up or if they're not going to do the mask all the time but it will be jarring to see robert downey jr back in the mcu and be like oh jesus you're a villain now but i also think it will take audiences all of three minutes to get over that and just Agreed. get back on the train Agreed. ride the fact that it's it's like it's like a three minute shock it's like it's like when the force awakens came out and the 20th century fox logo didn't open it just went straight to lucasfilm logo it's like whoa <laughs> where's the bum 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 it's an adjustment bum, bum. it's an adjustment but the, the point it's being is that, like we said in in our in, in our other video about Deadpool and Wolverine, it's the whole thing with the MCU. Like up to Endgame, it was pretty much perfection. Between Endgame and now and Deadpool and Wolverine, it's been really wishy-washy. So you either get on board with it and where it's gonna go, or you get precious about it and you know stay in the past with it, which is fine if that's what you want to do. But ultimately you've also got to see it deeper than that. Like Iron Man, well not even just Iron Man, Downey carried the MCU. I wouldn't say mm. that it, I mean, obviously there's there's other films that don't even feature him and stuff like that, but he is the bloodline. He is the the main vein of the MCU. He made it what it was. So it What's makes it doesn't entirely, exist exactly, it makes entirely perfect sense to me that he would come back in any capacity. And if you're a Marvel fan, an MCU fan, a casual fan like me, if you're invested yep. in the whole multiverse thing, then you're invested in the fact that anything can happen. And I'm not being <laughs> funny. But people, since he died, or since Iron Man died in um, in Endgame, and the whole multiverse thing became the focus, everyone's been calling for him to come back, and he's back. So why are you moaning now? Yeah, it's. I mean, I. It's you're completely correct. It's you can never make everyone happy, and if you look at the reactions yeah. out of Comic Con, people lost their little minds when he came out on stage. There was yeah. the and air of happiness, so. <laughs> and rightfully bloody so. The air of happiness yeah. around the super geek said it, it spoke volumes. And then the last comment from this guy oh, yeah, one more thing looking to the past to find their next big thing is not going to make a movie that stands out. Every single time that happens, it's only fun for a fan service heavy movie in theaters, but doesn't stand the test of time. Doom deserves better than that. Okay, a few things on that. There's a little movie out at the moment called Deadpool versus Wolverine, Deadpool and Wolverine, <laughs> which basically is a fan service movie. Now, the irony of all this is that I didn't particularly like that movie, but 92% of people do if we go off audience scores on Rotten Tomatoes. So 
I maintain that I think Deadpool and Wolverine is not going to stand the test of time. So I kind of agree with the statement. But the fact of the matter is the studio needs to start making a billion dollars again. And Deadpool and Wolverine has just made half a billion in less than a week. So I think they've done the right thing. If your statement is true, which I believe yeah. it to be, which is this is just fan service. Well, guess what? That makes mm. money. No, money is not money is not a grade. Money is not a grade of quality. I have never said that because a movie is successful, that no. makes it good. But the studio are trying to make money. This will make them money. It's as simple as mm -hmm. that. You know, and Lu Louis put in in one of his WhatsApp messages to me, he says, This just so shows how desperate they are. And it's like, but you say that like it's a oh, bad no, thing. Louis. But, but, but hang on, I, but hang I on. Mean... Let's let's break that statement down. It's not a bad thing. If a studio no, is making a bill, a studio is making a billion dollars a movie, right? Then it has a really bad run. Of course, it's going to be a bit desperate and be like, "Well, we need to start making a billion dollars a movie again." They're backtracking. So... They're backtracking yeah. on a on a poor yeah. period. They made they've made some poor yeah. decisions. They put some good content out. They like like we said in the last video, some good shows, the Wonder Visions, the Hawkeyes. Yeah. You know, some good, some not so good, but they've lost their traction how better to get that traction back than to start a new phase of marvel with the man who started it all in the first place that's it that's it and he's just a villain this time i love it and now my and final pitch my, my <laughs> final pitch if you were going to make him a stark variant do it have the ultron project be a success have him wrap the whole world quote unquote in a coat of armor Ooh. and have that power go to his head you are I like feeding that. the carrot of course you're like you're you're staying true to the character in the sense that he's e he's motivated by ego he's successful yep. because of iq you can have him mm -hmm. have a murdered mother that makes him turn evil and that could be his motivation for covering the world in armor no demon will ever rape or kill my mother again well she you can't because she's dead but you get my point, right? He could mm -hmm. have a reason. Revenge. It might not be it, it, revenge. He might wrap the world in a coat of armor because of revenge. And that happens in an alternative timeline. And hey, presto, you've got a Doctor Doom. Change that traditional metal suit into looking like an Iron Man suit. And hey, ho, yep. you have a movie and you're going to have people geeking out about Doctor Doom, the great villain, being the main antagonist of the Avengers. And it's like, mm -hmm. I'm not a good writer. And it took me five seconds to come up with that story. Yeah. And people far more brilliant than me are coming up with this stuff. Oh, he also threw shade at the Russos for being directing again. And I'm like, no, no, not having that. Not having that. No, the, no. You, you mean, you mean the guys that gave us Infinity War, Endgame, Civil War and the Winter Soldier? Y you got a problem with them. Well, World's this just doesn't smell of an agenda at all. Hero comic book genre directors of all time questionably no i'm not having that they're fantastic they are great yeah, but how many credits realm. how many other directors have that many top class credits in specifically in the comic book genre that's what i'm Doesn't saying exist. so if you were going to rate exist. them that way that's what i'm saying so yeah i could not that's disagree ridiculous. with that more like i'm not being so funny well, if they bring in sorry i was gonna say if they bring in another director oh, no. to do it mm -hmm. and could they completely flop it they're going to complain about that as well because these guys know what yep. they're doing. They've made it work before. That's what they're doing. They're backtracking now and doing the stuff that obviously I'm like, oh, I said they should have done this. But as soon as they came out of the first phase, I was like, this is what they need to do. They didn't do it. They're now backtracking and doing what they should have done coming out of Endgame. Now, questionably, it might not be a bad thing that they've had a downtime because now they can bring mm -hmm. it back up and they can almost bring back that excitement and the fandom and all of that that they brought in the first phase. So I'm I'm exactly I'm right. here for it, I'll be honest. Too bloody right. So you should be. Um yeah. So those are kind of our thoughts on do we think this is a good idea or a bad idea? I think it's unanimous. This is a freaking great idea, contrary to what the 23 million people on TikTok, uh, sorry, not TikTok, not this time, Twitter might say. Um <laughs> yeah. This has been a really what, good discussion. Cesspool of human Thank opinion. You. Yes, oh, God, yes, the cesspool of human opinion. The cesspool of human <laughs> opinion on Twitter and the gatekeeper pearl-clutching virgins on TikTok. Aren't we popular? <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> they're gonna love God this video almighty. oh they're gonna love this video um <laughs> yeah what should we title this video if Gate you believe Robert Ar beware <laughs> <laughs> virgins <laughs> jesus i was thinking more something along the lines of why rdj is doom is a great idea or why you're wrong for hating the doctor doom casting but yeah we can go with gatekeeping virgins beware <laughs> <laughs> i think more people might find it with your ideas but i think mine's more fun don't be honest i think you might be right um all right we will catch you guys again very soon for another video i uh, will try and link up i guess tomorrow evening for the game of thrones stuff uh but yeah mm -hmm. guys it's been real thank you as always please do uh like this video subscribe if you haven't done so already there's a subscribe button up here and another video for you to watch down here so go ahead and do all that goodness and we will see you guys on the next video thank you so much guys bye for now bye everyone